So thank you for, for coming. Um, just a few words as to the reasons why uh, I wanted to write this presentation. And um, it's, I don't think you should worry. I'm not becoming a personal development guru. There's not going to be a book. There's no newsletter, there's no newsletter you need to sign up for. Um, it's just my, my experience uh, growing up as a producer. And uh, there are some things that I wish somebody had told me uh, at the right moment, especially when I became a producer. Um, and I wish I, I had known those things because things would, uh, then it would have been easier for me and for my teams. So this is my, a few of the things that I found useful uh, when becoming a producer. And um, this is uh, what I want to share with you. So let's go. So the, the theme is personal development uh, for producers. I'll start by um, we, we know, I know many of the people here, but I'll start by uh, saying a few things about myself and my uh, road to become a producer. So I started, as many of us, with a craft. Uh, I was a junior designer, then I became a game designer, then a lead designer. Um, I was very, very passionate about what I was doing. I was uh, very much into uh, all that it meant. Uh, the psychology, the difficulty curves, um, the excitement when you, I launched my games. Um, and at some point, I became a producer. And then, and then uh, I started to recruit and mentor other producers, became a senior producer. Um, then I became a studio manager, partnering with uh, Alex Marinescu in uh, Electronic Arts. Um, and now for the past couple of years, uh, I'm uh, an indie developer. Um, and there is a certain moment when, when, and I completely missed it, because I was so engulfed in my craft, in my game designer craft, uh, when, when I became a producer at this moment, I wish somebody had talked to me about personal development. Because what happened was that I kept doing it with my own rules, without, without proper training. Uh, and in our defense at that time, there, wasn't, there weren't that many people who could teach us, uh, because the industry was very, very young. Uh, and there were very few producers. Um, but I was, I was so engulfed in, in still doing my, my, my games and my passion um, and I wish that somebody had told me, look, what you've been doing until now, it's about your craft, it's about your passion. Now you became a producer, and it's, you need to learn a different craft as a producer, right? It's not only about uh, ergonomics and uh, game design and, uh, and making things uh, fun. It's also about the craft of being a producer. You need to uh, get your fundamentals down uh, you need to be able to understand budgeting and schedule and the market and the niche you're into. And uh, ideally, as, you, as, you, as I grow, you grow up, you need to think about uh, marketing, go to market plans and PR, and then people management. And you need to maybe manage a franchise and all that. But also, the reason why all these things could, could get really, really wrong uh, is you and your performance, and your knowledge of yourself. So I think if somebody had told me that, I think it would have been easier for me and easier for my teams. And I, I really loved my teams, but I put them into very difficult situations, sometimes because of my performance. So this is, this is what I wanted to, uh, this is what I will talk about. Uh, what are things that the producer should know when, they, when we become a producer? Right? Uh, and make a short checklist with things that I find useful. Um, why, 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 what do you imagine when you become a producer? Right? I was thinking, I'm going to make these great games and I will be uh, enough of a leader to inspire the team to make them and people are going to love these games and play them forever and it's going to make a lot of money, that game I, I, and I'm making, right? Um, the, the reality that I see, and I think many of us imagine that, is that I see teams that are stuck 
uh, that uh, don't know why they're doing what they're doing. Uh, they don't know what they're doing. Um, they don't know how they're going to become successful. I see producers that become choke points for their projects because um, everybody's waiting for them. Right? The, your, if you're lucky enough to have a project manager, that project manager is waiting for a product backlog. And management wants the two-year vision for your project. And you need to hire those very, very, very key people. And so on and so forth. And, and you're a big, you've actually become a blocker for your team um, if you don't function properly. Um, and it's your job to function to the highest quality you can. Um, I also see producers, and it happened to me, that become procrastinated. Right? How can you become procrastinated when you have the greatest job in the freaking world? Right? You are a game producer. It's out there with Jeremy Clarkson and, and other, other you know, dream jobs. How can you, well, it happens. Uh, if you don't pay attention to yourself, you can become procrastinating, even, even with a dream job. Um, and I also see producers that get sick. I don't know if you realize, or maybe if you, maybe it happened to you, uh, there is a moment of truth when you're in the ER at 3 a.m. because of stress, uh, and uh, you think you learned something. I hope I learned something by, by that. But there are many of the producers who actually get sick and the reason why they get sick is because they get so stressed out. Because they, I think because they're not ready, and they don't know what to do with that. That actually, you at some point, it starts to for things to happen in your body. So that was the dream. Actually, what I saw happening, and it happened to me, was the exact opposite of that. It was so far of what what I imagined it would be. Um, so w this is what I would like to to do today. Um, Talk about personal development, what it means, just quick, uh, quick definitions. Uh, and then we're going to cross-check with the producers uh, what I think is a producer job. And then we'll see, if I think there are some points that would help, even if they're very, very simple. Um, a few definitions first. What, what is personal development? Um, if you go to Wikipedia, actually, there's a very, very nice uh, uh, definition of personal development. And so it's about you, right? It's about self-knowledge, self-awareness. It's about building identity. And as a producer, you get, as a leader, you better know who you are, what you stand out for. Um, and it's about developing yourself. Um, what, what, are the, what would be typical uh, things you would learn when you start thinking about personal development? Be building identity and personality. I think that's essential. Um, Self-awareness, um, which is knowing who you, how you really are, right? As opposed to the mental image you have yourself, or the dream of who, who you could be. Um, Self-knowledge is the same thing. Um, time management. We're going to talk about time management later, because it's the first thing that personal development starts with. Um, it's about understanding potential. It's about stress management, uh, becoming healthy, and so on. So it's, it's about you, about improving your quality of living, about how much you know about yourself. Um, now, what is a producer's job? Um, I think everybody talks about vision. Uh, and as a producer, it depends where you come from. It's always, always you talk about vision. Uh, if, you're, if you're in a big company, uh, like a console game, then the vision, you don't own the vision, but you carry the vision. Uh, the difference is that you have a creative director who owns that vision, right? But you carry the vision, meaning that you have to make sure that vision is communicated, it happens, and you talk about it with everyone. You have external stakeholders, you have internal uh, management talk about, you have your team, your peers, everybody needs to know what, what, what this is about. If you're in a small team, mobile team, for example, this, this is on you and your designer, um, or your team. Um, then it's communication, and I think 
Uh, probably one of the things that go wrong most of the time is communication. And if the team doesn't know what they're working on, if the communication didn't work, it's your fault, right? It's the producer's fault, but that's your, that's your job. Uh, it's one of the most critical things that you need to do. Um, team happiness, because as a producer, you don't really do things by yourself. You need people to help you do, uh, make that game. And it should, you sh they should be happy. Um, quality. Um, you are the, the person that is in charge of, uh, of uh, measuring, maintaining, and setting the standards for that. Um, and delivery. Uh, you're the, you, you are the person who promises uh, or the first figures out and then promises uh, when to um, deliver. And it's, you, should, you should deliver on time. Um, and other than, I think these are the most important, but depending on where you work, how, how if you have a smaller team or a larger team, if you're in charge of, uh, of a franchise or, or of a big team or of a studio, um, there's a lot of other things to do. Um, it, you can, we can get more into detail. You should understand scheduling, budget, people management, hiring, uh, PR, marketing, and all that. So actually the producer's job is a lot more complicated than that. Um, there's a lot of things that need to, you need to do. I did that on, on purpose to make a point. Um, the first thing that I want to talk about is this, time management. So there's one thing you need to start with. I, I, that's my experience, right? Maybe other, other people will talk uh, about it differently. It's, it's time management. Um, all personal development starts with it. Uh, maybe you've, everybody has heard about time management. Sorry if you, if you already have a time, system, uh, time management system. But if you're a producer and you do not have a time management system, you do not, do not use one, do it. Um, there are many things, actually, let me go back. Uh, sorry. Come on. Okay, so uh, a time management, what, what it does is, first, usually all the systems, they're, they're gonna give you, gain some time for you quickly. There are some easy things that you can do, you gain time. Um, then then the, they will help you set up a system so that you maintain that, that time. And now that you've gained time, um, you, you should be asking yourself a few in, important questions, right? Like, um, uh, what do I want to do with this project? What does success look like? Um, what can go wrong? Risk management. Uh, what do I need to know? Um, so you, you should think ahead. Some systems for time management, I, for me, getting things done pretty much saved my life. Uh, I started to use that. Um, getting things done is a system that actually tries to clear your mind. You put it into a system that you, uh, you trust, and then you solve things one, one thing at a time. Um, the Pomodoro system uh, for, um, is a system where it tries to use how the brain works so that you can you work in chunks of uninterrupted work and then you have some pauses and some rewards uh, in between those. Uh, there are others like the, the, the Pareto. Pareto is the 2080 principle. Um, and then the Eisenhower technique uh, we're going to talk about next comes from a famous um, uh, quote from uh, the general Eisenhower. Um, so this is a priority ma matrix, and there is how important your task is, this is how urgent your task is. Um, thing is, most of us stay here, right? In, in the urgency part. So if, if it's high importance and high urgency, then you do it right, because it's important, it's very urgent. Uh, but then most of the time we spend time into the very high, it's very urgent, but it's really not that important. Somebody's asking for help, uh, you have to be in that meeting, uh, this is your further info note. So so thing is, what you should do, sure, there are emergencies, um, but most of the time you should spend there, on the, on, on the really important things that are not urgent. 
because that's when you that's where you invest that's where you move forward um, and there are things that like the here the do later stuff the low importance and high urgency you do it maybe there's not no not by the time you go there there's no need to do it <laughs> uh, many times things get solved by a certain, and there's stuff that you should never do some examples um, there's a crisis you launch the game and something happened you solve that uh, there's a deadline you solve that there's some calls maybe you have an exec team or, or a partner do those uh, but there are calls that you maybe meetings that you don't need to be in don't do those um, maybe it's more important to exercise to do some planning to clarify the vision for for your game for your team uh, don't don't get caught here. Most of the time is, is, is lost here. So now that you, you gain time, uh, you use this to identify what your priorities should be. With a system, time management system, you've gained time. Now you have time to think ahead. That's what you should do as a producer. And you should think about your vision, your long-term strategy. You have time to think about what could go wrong, risk management. Do and dream about your planning, redo. Think about team happiness. These are the things that you should spend time on, not on the urgent things. So time, time management is the, the, the first one. And now you have time. The second thing I, I suggest that you do with that time is work in identity and your personality. Right? Um, what do I mean by that? Um, all the people that inspired me as producers, they had the vision, they wanted to, they knew how to get to that vision. Um, they could explain it, they knew it by heart, and, but the one that caught me was the strength of convic their conviction. They actually believed in it, right? It wasn't something that they were doing, but even if, even if they were wrong, it was fine, I would follow them. Right? Because they were trying to do something they believed in, and something that was interesting, even if it was an experiment, even they, if they were wrong, I would follow them. Uh, because it was real. Right? Um, I, I wouldn't follow somebody who is just there for, for the salary. Right? Uh, I would follow somebody who tried to do things. So this is what, when, when, I, when I'm talking about uh, working on, our, on your identity, uh, and it's tied to what Gabriel was saying about the, the incubation process. This is a similar uh, process. So if you have time on your hands, if you gained, if you worked for that time, it's going to be so much easier for you, all the other stuff that you will be working on. If the vision that you created, if the things that you stand out for, you, you actually believe in them and you have an opinion, right? Identity and personality, are formed through a process that is similar to the incubation and creativity. So you put information in, 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 inside, right? You find out about something, you study, you watch something, you talk to somebody, something happened, you put information in there, you process it some, somehow or it incubates, you think about it, you analyze it, you correlate, or sometimes you just sleep, you do nothing, because uh, it needs that time. Um, but Equally important, this is what is not happening in today's world, uh, and this is the important part, is that for personality to form, for an opinion, to, for you to have an identity, which is what you stand for, your set of beliefs, right? Uh, you have to extract that information. And we, we keep watching stuff that pops on, for, you know, on Facebook on the, ahead of us. We keep reading a lot of stuff. We look at walkthroughs, we look at all those things, you keep putting information in. But for us to have a clear opinion for, for those connections to happen, uh, we have to get it out, right? So in order to get it out of there, what would happen when I, was, when I started is that we would talk to each other, right? We would debate, we would get some, some drinks, and we would say, yes, this game is good, this feature is great. No, it, it's crap, no, it's terrible. It's no, and then we would have to argue and argument why it's great or why it's crap. Uh, that, that's the simplest way, right? Do it with, with your friends, with your peers. Uh, but you can 
mentor somebody, teach them about that, uh, write, right? have uh, maybe a presentation. But as a, I think this is critical for a producer because, you, first of all, you have to think through what you believe in, right? Freemium is crap. Freemium is the devil. Why? Right? Freemium doesn't. It, it's, it's, it, it ruined the game industry. Well, it didn't. That's my opinion. Right? But you, you should, you'd, you'd better figure it out. If you, have to, if you make a freemium game, right? you figure that one out in detail. Know, know what kind of freemium game would you would like to, to make and why it's good, how you could make a freemium game that is okay with your values and what you believe in. Um, so, critical for, for a person, and then I think people are going are gonna to react to that, right? If you make a freemium game because your CEO said that your company is never going to make any other game than, than freemium games, but you actually hate them, I think that your team is going to feel that. They're going to sense that. And you're not going to be convincing, and, and then all the other stuff that you're doing is going to be much more difficult because they know. It's whenever I succeeded to move somebody from my teams to impress them, to to give them a, a, some some um, sense of accomplishment, and and that we're going to do something. So this was because I believed in in what I was doing, and it it happened the same with me with other producers that inspired me. So um, I think for me this process is important, and if there's one one important like the the important stuff that doesn't is never urgent, this is one of the processes that you should be working on. So other things that are important, so get, get some time to think. Um, I think you should, you should spend a few, a few tens of minutes, hours, I don't know how, how long you need every week, and think. We're, you're always caught in the urgent, form a habit of, of spending time to think and do not underestimate the, 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 the time you need to be alone, right? When you, you, in order to, to do all that, in order for the incubation to happen, in order for you to, to do your thinking, you should spend some time alone. That's really important, in my opinion. I know it, it, it was, for me, as a producer, I was thinking, hey, I'm, an, I'm also an extrovert, right? So I tend to be energized by interaction with other people. But alone time is very helpful. At least it was for, for me. And then another important part, and this is the... Don't take it as a, as a the touchy-feely part of it, but you really think about what you want to do. If you're making mobile games, but you hate them, and the moment you get out of the door, you start. You play only console games and only hardcore games, and and uh, that's the, that's the, that's an extreme case, right? Uh, but it sure it's the real life. You know, not everybody has the choice of doing their dream job and, and doing the Witchers and the, and the Blizzard games. Um, but at least you should have a plan of what you want to do, what are the experiments that you want to make, right? Maybe, maybe I want to see for once in my life how it is to do a proper prototyping phase with only three people, like Gabriel was saying, but they are seniors. I want to see how, how a cell, like Supercell is doing, how that feels. That's, that's something that I could do, it could motivate me, and then all the other things that you learned about, uh, in, in when people say, do upper management, manage your boss. Sure, I can manage my boss by sending him more emails than he can read, right? And so that he leaves me alone. But wouldn't it be great to manage my boss by lobbying and turning him into a mentor for something that I would like to see happen? So I think it's, I think it's really, really, really sad when I talk to producers and I ask them, what do you want to do? If the answer is a combination of company values or objectives put there by my boss, or maybe sometimes, and this happened to me, 
uh, a combination of the restrictions and things that I thought I owed to people and my duty to them, and, but nothing about what I wanted to do, it's gonna be very hard for you to, be, to stay focused and motivated and move other people. You need that energy, right, uh, as, as a leader. And it, it doesn't have to be the crazy things like that we dream of. It doesn't have to, it can be realistic, right, but find, find one of those things that you would like to do. Things that would make you grow as a producer or make you happy. So, and, and I wanted to emphasize that. So, for identity building, get out that uh, information that you put in your system. In, in your system. Um, the third one, this is more of a, uh, and this is the last part, uh, the part of, with, I named them perks. Um, so, the first one was time management. The second one was to build your identity as a producer. The third one is self-awareness, and this is more of a collection. Um, of other things that I found useful, right? So one of them is to test yourself um, because the image that you have of yourself is not, maybe not what the image that is, is not real. Uh, and if you think you're great at motivating people, but uh, actually you're not, uh, or something, and, and it, you're not, not because you're not a great person, but because there's something that you don't realize, right? Um, Give you an example. I don't. I, I. I had a direct report. Who is an introvert? Right. I'm an extrovert. Right. What happens when an extrovert talks to an introvert? Right. What? I'm an extrovert. If you talk to me, what is the first thing that I'm going to say? Whatever comes through my mind. Right. Because I'm. I'm. I'm thinking by talking. I'm an extrovert. Right. Whereas an introvert. He's going to think, spend enough time to, to reach an opinion, and then give me that answer, right? So the frustration of talking with an extrovert talking to an introvert was terrible. I, couldn't, I could not communicate, right? Why? Because I needed to talk uh, to, to make up my mind, right? And he had already thought, and he didn't understand why, why I gave you the, my answer. I thought about it for 20 seconds and I gave you my answer, why, why do you still need to talk, right? So this is an example to say, maybe you're not as good as you think you are, but not because you're not a great person, right? But because there are things that you, maybe you don't know yet. Um, second one is about educated communication. Uh, and I think that we all, especially as producers, we are in the position where you need to communicate a lot, but there are some things that we need to know. And the third one um, is stress management. You, I think there are a few things that you should do to cope with stress. So let's talk to them about uh, uh, one, one after the other. Um, there are a few things, uh, a few things that you can, there are a few tests and tools out there that you can use. Some of them are free, some of them would be good if the company would help you with. Um, Myers-Briggs is one of them. It's, uh, it talks about uh, personality. Um, then there's a per there are uh, lifestyle or personal or management or leadership style uh, inventory. Um, those talk more about things like um, are you a perfectionist, for example. Um, it was a surprise to me to find for for me to find out that perfectionism is it depends on the definition. But in management and leadership, perfectionism is bad because you're, you're never happy. You're never pleased, right? So then that goes to your team and they, they, never, they can never please you. So you're actually having, you, I thought it's a value of oh, every single feature should be taken to perfection. But actually, I was, I was depressing my team, right? Because they could never please me, right? Uh, it's, it's an example, right? So this is what, what he talks uh, about. It, it's, all, it's also applicable to, uh, to yourself and, and to the culture that you're building. Um, 360 feedback is very useful. Again, some eye-openers there. Uh, what you think about yourself and what's coming uh, from, from the people who interact with you. Um, so I think, I think it's important. I, I don't know if it, there's any need to explain it further, but uh, it, it would be good if you had a, a more realistic version of yourself. It's hard to see yourself. 
Um, educated communication. Um, I have to thank uh, Adrian Stanchu, who, who was my mentor and coach um, for, for a while for, for this one. Um, he says, look, you guys are a great team. If I put you together, we did some, some, some leadership and, and some coaching and training with them, and, and we, we did some exercise and said, you guys are great. You give the best results that I, I like, you're like in top 99% of all the, the, in terms of quality of how you solve the exercises, you're fantastic. But you, when you get out of there, you're exhausted, right? You're, you're emotional wrecks. Right, because you, 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 and he said that that happens because you do not have, you're not you're not educated enough, you're not trained enough and empathic enough when you communicate. Right? And he 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 explained to me a few things. He said, look, when you talk with somebody and, and it's a team, uh, Simon, first listen to what the person wants to say, and try to understand that, not the exact words not what you want to hear, right? just really listen to what that person wants to say. And sure, and you can ask questions and verify if that is understanding, but they're also game developers and great people. I, I, I would assume that there's no need to impose right, my, what I want, and I want to be heard, or that's so really, the good people listen to really what they want to say. And for us, I think it could be also a cultural thing, uh, with us, we're very competitive in how we go into meetings, talk about it, uh, or, you know, to, everybody talks, to be, somebody talks to be heard. Uh, sometimes you want to just talk to confirm your own opinion and, and things like that. When, when we talk about educated communication, this is one of the things that I'm talking about. The second one is before you answer, you're talking to somebody, really truly put yourself in doubt. It doesn't mean that you have to sway this way or the other. What if he says it should be blue, yes, it should be blue. Oh, no, no, it should be pink, yes, you're right, it should be, no. Keep your opinion to yourself. I believe that it should be blue because in this feature, I want a feeling of security, right? Uh, and But you think that it's, uh, it should be orange because uh, actually I want that person to feel hungry, and that person, fine, I think, but I think it's more important, but actually think that maybe that person is right, maybe you're not right, just consider it, make your own decision, be sure of yourself, but consider it, really consider it. Um, and the other, the other part is, I really think that, especially when it comes to creative teams, you should learn how to make those people, especially when it comes to brainstorming or, but in general, in every meeting, um, people should feel psychologically safe, right? They should, you should create an environment where it's safe to be yourself, it's safe to, it's safe to, to say stupid things, it's safe to, to um, I don't know, be wrong. Um, because I think that's very important for creativity. If a person is, feels safe, then they're gonna let go and they, then you're gonna get the best version of that person. So um, this is, these are a few tips that I, I think will help about uh, communication. And the last one is about stress management. Um, I think uh, I've been in that situation, I'm a perfectionist, I get anxious because I want things to get so, to be so wrong, so, so good. And Furthermore, stress is going to happen in our position as producers. There's deadlines and a whole com complex thing, and, and we're not doing banking, or others, or the banking is not that simple. Uh, we're not doing something simple. We're trying to create something that is fun. Even that is hard to, to define. We know that we need to have a, a different process than other, other types of software. So stress will happen. It's in inevitable. The question is, what do you do with it? Right? How do you deal with it? So you get stressed. You should have something in your life that burns that stress. You you, you do I know you do base jumping, uh, whatever works for you. 
you dance, you you go crazy, you go, go drunk. I don't know, get, getting drunk doesn't work. Uh, find ways to, to burn stress, right? Um, and and sport is a good a good uh, good way to do that. Uh, extreme sports are, are also. I, I've seen many of the execs. I met that deal with a lot more stress than I did, that uh, did something else. But you, you need to find something in the quality of your entertainment once you leave your, your work so that you burn that stress. Um, and if things really are hard, uh, think about um, thinking about some anxiety management and some mindfulness. Uh, mindfulness, like, I, I really like what uh, Alan Watts uh, wrote about um, like thinking about being right here, right now, and what can I do right now, being aware, and not having an argument with somebody that uh, in a meeting that's going to happen four days from now, and not relive that what happened like five days ago or five years ago all the time, right? Because that's just you stressing out and getting more and more anxious, and you're going to get sick. So. Um, stress management uh, is, is important. These, these are a few, a few things that I needed to realize myself. So, and you're going to say, look, but there's a lot of stuff here. Right? There's many, many things. I mean, you talked about a lot of things, and there's more. Right? All the stuff that, that I feel in the screen, there's more that I have to manage. How do I do that? Um, there's a trick. Um, and that trick is... Um, and to explain it, I, I really like uh, this, this example, right? Which is the how do adults learn? Uh, so first, I, and it sounds cool, I'm gonna read it how it sounds first, right? I don't know what I don't know first. Now I, don't, I know what I don't know. Then I know what I know. And at the end, when I finish the complete the cycle, I don't know what I know. And now I'm gonna explain it, right? Something happens. Right? I realize I'm not ready for it, right? Um, I need to do change management, right? And I have no clue how to do change management. Um, because I had this a new tool. I want to go and, and do some, I need to, I, I think there should be a new tool, or we need to go to freemium, or some, something happened, I need to convince my people that the, a change is important, I don't know how to do that. So. What happens then? I, I know I don't know how to do change management, right? Uh, and then I start to study, or I ask people, or, or I, I, somebody is mentoring me, and now I know, right? I know that I don't know how to do change management. I start to study, I know what I know, but um, then I practice, and I do it once, and I do it second time, the third one time, and at some point I've been doing it for so enough times I've been going to the gym every morning, right, to feel, to feel good, that I, I, I do it without, right, I, I forgot, I'm not doing it consciously anymore, right, I'm like, like driving the car. At the beginning, I was aware, so aware of the wheel and, the, and, 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 and gear shift and all that. Uh, at where you want to go is at the point that you, you, you do it without being aware of it. Right, so that's when you t you you t you've turned to, into a habit. So this is this is how you can take so many the, the so many things that you need to do and to know as a producer, and you take them one by one. It takes about thirty days if you believe it depends on every person what you're trying to learn. If you believe uh, the people in the game in in the personal development literature, it takes about thirty days. I think it's about right. It depends. Sometimes you never succeed, sometimes it, it, you succeed, but you, at least if you try, some of them is gonna, are gonna become habits and you're just gonna, that's how you, how, how you can cope with more complexity over time. Um, and, but the same guy, Adrian Stanchu, told me, he was very frustrated. He came back after one year and we did more training and he was like, you guys are, you forgot everything I taught you. And then we got into this very, very well, long discussion because I was trying to figure out why. Um, and it turns out that we're gamers. What do we do when we have spare time? So, sure, play from time, but don't, don't do it all the time, right? So, 
um, I was very frustrated because I've seen, like, instead of something happened, we tried to learn something in my teams, and then after a very short time, all forgotten, right? Uh, and I think as a producer, you should at least spend some time every week. I love to play. I play every day, right? But uh, spend some time in, in doing this, doing, paying some attention to the, to, the, um, to the personal development part. So the conclusion. Um, I, I wish I knew much earlier how, how to manage my time. Um, I think that from the moment when I started to act actively and very being aware of how and searching and developing my identity and what I believe in and the process that I want to work with uh, as a producer, things went easier and faster. Um, Self-awareness removed a lot of the, of the uh, hurdles that I had ahead of me. Um, and I think habits, um, if, you, if you succeed to turn some of these things into habits, uh, you're, it's going to become much more uh, sustainable long term to learn and to grow as a producer. And my apologies, apologies if you knew these things already. Um, some of these things are, are basic. Um, the reason why I wanted to talk about this, and uh, I'm, I'm, going, I'm going to end it here, um, is because I, I would like the game industry to become more mature, right? And it, it should come from producing, especially in, in, in Romania. So the fact that we know these things is not enough. We actually should, should do some of these things and become better versions of producers um, if, we, if we are to become that mature industry that we all want, want to become. We've done great steps. I think something like this, and the reason why I wrote, uh, I, I, I wanted to talk about this is because I think, I, I don't see it happening. Right? People, some people know but it's very rare that I see these things happening. In, in a, in a, and I think it's important for uh, if, we, if we want to be more mature. Thank you. <laughs> Do you have any questions? Things that we would like to talk about? I, I can be bribed with coffee, <laughs> and so coffee. I'm, I'm, I do drink coffee and 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 beer, but not so much. But uh, coffee is is good. I can uh, I can uh, give free free talks and discussions, and uh, I will argue and uh, and uh, try and debate uh, some of these things uh, just uh, for free. I'll pay for my own coffee. Okay. Okay. Mm, go. You mentioned that in order to inspire your teams, you have to believe in what you create. Like, so how do you how do you generally go about um, working with teams um, with teams on projects that you're not really um, that you don't necessarily believe in or that don't click with you? You mentioned, for example, peak test create opinion game when you think that the team is doing that great. So how would you go about doing that? About inspiring your team? About um, inspiring your team when it's something that you that is the question, isn't it? Uh, did everybody hear the, the question? So how, how do, the question was, how do you deal with the situation when, when you have a project, you have a team, and, and you have to do something that you do not believe in? Uh, in this case, freemium, let's say. Um, so I think you should start by, I, sometimes you're, you have the authority to influence the decision of being freemium or not, sometimes you don't. If you can, argue against it if you don't believe in it. Right? Compromise is the worst, worst thing you could do in, in general for every decision making. Um, but if you have to, have to do it, um, then it's out of your hands. Uh, I think for the short term and medium term, you should 
um, make it work. Find the things that are that are good for your team. Uh, try and find things that would help you on your way to become a producer. And if you really don't want to do it, get out of there. All right, so do your duty for your team, your project, for the things that you signed up for. But if it really makes you unhappy, don't stay there for long. All right, it's a, it's a, no, it's a situation with no, no end, really. With no, with no real like, right, uh, exit. Right? Somebody is making you do something that you don't want to do, you don't believe in. First of all, make, I think what I try to, would try to do is make sure that I really don't hate you really hate doing that for sure, right? Because I, I actually, there's people who hate freemium, but they play Hearthstone. So, if you, so maybe you should do that type of game and influence it to do something like that. But if it, it doesn't, it really doesn't happen, at some point, think about doing something else. Yeah, so if you're, pro if you're a professionist first, you will you will do it right. You will do, but the th I I think what I think is that you're you're gonna get a mediocre game. Right? You're gonna get get a game of seven out of ten. Because everybody's gonna behave as a professionalist, and they're gonna try and do uh, their work, and they're gonna come in because they have good ethics and good work ethics. They're gonna try their their best, but the limit of their best is going to be they're gonna they they won't. You will not. I think you will not be able to motivate your team. And do you want to ask a question? Come on. Uh, <laughs> okay. First of all, thanks for sharing from your experience. Uh, I'll jump directly to the question. Uh, you speak about team happiness. Uh, if you would try to compare. Uh, working on a big company and now in Indy, uh, how is your approach? Are the methods different and the solutions or are quite similar? Thanks. I, I should first try to explain. So I, I wanted to work with the specific team, this team, for a reason. I really, I wanted to see what happens if you take veterans and you work with them, right? And there were only four people, all of them veterans, um, and some things happen by really by themselves, right? So uh, at some point we started and, and we did some plan, more planning and all, and, and, and proper scrum and. Uh, and it, there was no need for that, right? Motivation uh, is not uh, is not that. Then I, so so right now I'm in, in a situation where it's uh, more of an ideal uh, situation. However, uh, what happens on the on the indie side is that you have uh, other things that get in the way, like financing, time uh, constraints, and uh, and all that. So. You switch one set of problems with the other. I think the team is happy and motivated by themselves, uh, but at the same time, you you have other other things in, uh, getting in your way. So it, it it's an exception, something that I really wanted to do and try. Uh, so it's it's different uh, than working in a in a corporation. But what what I will what I learned is that I will. I would love to. I I, I would want to do it again and again and again. Right, working with a team of people who know what they're doing, especially on the iteration part and the and the and the, um, uh, when 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 you're pre-production and you get with the ideas and all that, it's uh, it's an amazing uh, feeling. That's it. Okay. Thank you very much. Oh, done. Uh, when is your game coming out? <laughs> <laughs> uh, so it's uh, our game is called uh, uh, Tap Busters. Uh, it's uh, it's. Uh, Actually submitted to to Apple for approval, and so it's a clicker. You can you, you will soon. I, I'm going to post uh, when when it when it's approved on uh, the RGDA page, so you'll find out uh, about it. So Dan is uh, the co-founder co of Meta Games. So <laughs> I I almost got out of the here without saying anything about our game. Thank you very much.